We have learned that an inverse function reverses the action of the original function, and if a function is one-to-one, -one, then it is invertible. In section 5.1.3, we will learn about the relationship between graphs of inverse functions. Two functions are inverses of each other if their graphs are symmetric about the line y equals x. Now, we've talked about different types of symmetry before. We've learned how to reflect a graph across the x-axis and the y-axis when we study transformations. This is a new type of symmetry. We're talking about symmetry about the line y equals x. In example two, we're going to graph this line of symmetry y equals x on each grid, and we're going to use that to determine if the pair of functions graphed are inverse functions. You'll recall that y equals x is our basic identity function, or the most basic linear function. So on example A, you may want to grab a ruler. I will do my best here to draw a straight line. y equals x is the line that goes right through the center of the coordinate plane. So we're going to treat this line, y equals x, as a mirror. I'm testing to see if the two functions are mirror images of each other across the line y equals x. At first glance, whenever you look at the two functions that are given, let's call this one f and this one potentially f inverse. They do appear to be mirror images, but notice they are mirror images of each other across the y-axis. So the one on the left is reflected across the y-axis to match up with the one on the right. So we cannot say that they are inverse functions. So our conclusion here, these are not inverses. On example B, if we construct our line y equals x, again, it goes right through the center of the coordinate plane. That's our identity line or our most basic linear function. We're going to treat this like a mirror. Notice in this case that the pink line and the blue line are perfect reflections of each other across that line y equals x. Therefore, we can say if this is f, then this is definitely f inverses. So these are inverses. Also observe. If I choose a specific point on the function f, I'm going to use a point that's clear, negative 4, negative 2, and I find its mirror image across the line y equals x, and I read its ordered pair, the ordered pair here would be negative 2, negative 4. So notice the x value and the y value have switched. We saw that way back up here at the very beginning when we introduced our inverse functions. If AB is on the graph of f of x, then BA is on the graph of f inverse. If we switch every single ordered pair on the graph of f, it generates the graph of, inver of f inverse. This is basically switching the domain and range of each of those functions. Now, if we go back to example A, the two functions were not inverses, but we can use the graph of f to generate the graph of inverse using this technique. So notice right here we have ordered pair 1, 0. If I switch x and y, I would get ordered pair 0, 1. So the reflection of the first point on the graph of f lands at 0, 1. I could choose another ordered pair here. The ordered pair is 2, negative 1. If I switch x and y, I would end up with ordered pair negative 1, 2. And if I plot that point and then connect the dots, then I can see that this would be the inverse of the given function. Now they are mirror images across y equals x, whereas the original two were mirror images across the line or across the y-axis. Two functions are inverses when their graphs are reflections of each other across this line y equals x. 
In example three, we're going to use the graph of a function to generate the graph of an inverse function using this same technique. Construct the line y equals x on each graph. Then carefully plot the graph of f inverse by reflecting f of x across the line y equals x. We will determine the equation of the function and its inverse using transformations, and then state the domain and range of each graph in interval notation. So looking at our first example, let's call this function f or f of x, and let's construct our mirror y equals x that slices right through the center of the coordinate plane. That's going to be our mirror. Um, then we're going to choose some specific points on f of x, like the first given point here is 2, 0, and we switch x and y. In this case, we would get 0, 2. Notice our x-intercept becomes our y-intercept. And we could choose another point to observe here. This would be ordered pair 3, 1. And I'm going to switch x and y to get ordered pair 1, 3. Then I'm going to connect the dots, always keeping the original function in mind. The graph of f inverse is the reflection of f of x across the line y equals x. Now, knowing what we know about transformations, looking at the function called f of x, we could observe this is a basic square root function that has been shifted to the right by two units. So its equation would be square root of x minus 2. The domain of f then begins at 2 and goes to infinity. The range, the lowest point on that graph, has a y value of 0, and the highest y value would be infinity. Now, looking at the f inverse graph, we see there a parabola that has been shifted up the y-axis by two units. So the equation of that parabola would be x squared plus 2. However, this is the graph of a whole parabola with two halves. And a whole parabola with two halves, as we saw up here on example 1a, is not invertible. So in order to make this match up, we have to restrict the domain of this function and say this is only going to be true for x greater than or equal to 0. So I'm just looking at the right half of a parabola that has been shifted up the y-axis by two units. Looking at f inverse, just the part that's graphed, the domain is 0 to infinity. Now, to be sure that you understand where I'm looking, I'm considering the graph of f inverse. The leftmost x value here is 0. The rightmost x value is infinity. The lowest y value that we can find on this graph is 2, and the highest y value is infinity. Now, make the observation. Notice what happened. The domain of f became the range of f inverse, and the range of f became the domain of f inverse. That will always happen when you're dealing with inverse functions. Let's try this same type of exercise on example b. The first thing I want to do is construct the line y equals x. A ruler sure helps if you're working with pencil and paper. And I want to take this first graph called f, choose some specific points, and reflect them across the line y equals x by switching the ordered pairs. So I'm going to pick some easy to identify ordered pairs, such as 2, 0 on this graph, and reflect them across y equals x by switching x and y. So 2, 0 becomes 0, 2. Notice the x-intercept has become the y-intercept. Now, keep in mind, anywhere that the function f crosses our mirror, our function f inverse will intersect on that mirror as well. Let's choose one more point to reflect, maybe one or two more points. This one looks easy to identify. That's ordered pair 3, 1. When we switch x and y, we get ordered pair 1, 3. I would feel comfortable with one more point, so I'm going to choose this one. That's ordered pair 1, negative 1, and when we switch x and y, we get negative 1, 1. 
Then we are going to connect our dots by uh, mimicking the pattern of F, but doing it in the mirror image way. So if the first curve is F, this one is F inverse, and those look like a pretty good match. Now, let's think about what we know about transformations and see if we can write the function rule for each of these functions. Looking at F, we notice the parent function would be a cubic function, and this function has been translated to the right by two units. So we could express this as X minus two quantity cubed. The domain of this function is negative infinity to infinity, and the range is also negative infinity to infinity. Looking at the red curve, which we have identified as F inverse, notice it's that sideways squiggle shape, so we know the parent function is the cube root function, and notice the cube root has been translated up the y-axis by two units. So its equation would be cube root of x plus 2. Notice the plus 2 is outside of the function. The domain of f inverse is negative infinity to infinity, and the same is true for the range. So this one's not as obvious that our domain and range have switched, but anytime you have a function and its inverse, all of the ordered pairs reverse. That reflects the graph across y equals x, and the net result of that is simply that your domain and range completely switch. This will be true for exponential and logarithmic functions, which is really the focus of this unit coming up soon.